You're watching ABC News Breakfast. The federal standoff over an emissions trading scheme has again raised the prospect of an early election. The Prime Minister Kevin Rudd rejected a series of principles put forward by the coalition at the weekend. The Finance Minister Lindsay Tanner says opposition leader Malcolm Turnbull should propose legislative amendments rather than just vague talking points. We're happy to negotiate around specific amendments. We've always made that plain and that applies to the other parties in the Senate as well. But the Liberals are thrashing around in complete disarray. Wilson Tucky might be a colourful maverick, but on this issue, he speaks for a big proportion of the Liberal and National parties. They don't believe climate change is real. They have a very different view from the majority of the Australian population and the government. And Malcolm Turnbull's trying to paper over those cracks. That was Lindsay Tanner speaking yesterday on Channel 10. And for more on this, the Coalition's Emissions Trading spokesman, Andrew Robb, joins us now. Andrew Robb, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Virginia. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. If Malcolm Turnbull does believe so strongly in these proposed changes that he's mentioned uh, publicly and now to, to the Prime Minister, why not put them into legislation? Well, they are a very clear set of principles. And I hear what Lindsay Tanner and the government are saying. Um, and it's just disingenuous. These are a very concrete set of propositions. In fact, propositions that people can understand. I think the government's trying to bury a lot of the debate in highly technical amendments and legalistic propositions. You know, it's not difficult to have a d discussion about whether we should have a scheme which offers at least the same measure of protection to Australian jobs as the United States. Jenny George said we should have that. She didn't think it was a platitude. She thought it was a, a solid proposition. If, you, if we can sit down and have a discussion with the government on that sort of proposition and get some agreement, if they agree with us on that proposition, then the amendments that would give effect to that, they fall out very easily. They, they are then very obvious. But first and foremost, you have to settle, you know, is that a, is that a reasonable position that the community wants to adopt? The same with... You know, fugitive emissions for coal mines. That's not a vague platitude. That's a, that's a serious proposition. The same with agriculture. You know, do we have agriculture in the cap or not? Do we have 28 million cattle measured for their emission each year and taxed or not? The, Americans, what, what? Say, the Americans say not, right? But Should we do the same? That's a very clear proposition. It's not a platitude. It's not a vague proposition. But what, why can't you go through the legislation that's been proposed and the regulations, go one by one through them, cross out what you don't want, add what you want and put that to the government and then the government says yes or no? Why can't the, you do that? The, the, this is how we arrived at those principles. If you look back at all of our speeches in the House when this legislation was presented, the concerns that we had and that we have, the deep concerns we have, and not only us, the Greens have got concerns about this scheme not delivering anywhere near the sort of emission reductions and abatement that should occur. The, the, everyone's a critic of this legislation except the government. If we went through each of those propositions, they're highly technical. Who understands it? I don't, I don't think anyone in the committee, Penny Wong has failed totally to explain this legislation, how it works. We went through the technical issues and we developed all of the propositions that were of concern to us. Electricity prices, 30 or 40 percent increase. The US, half that, right? In the US, they're talking about excluding agriculture and allowing offsets. This legislation has the opposite. We went through all these issues and we distilled them into a set of propositions and principles which the government now refuse, refuse to even sit down at the table and talk with us. If Kevin Rudd thinks this is the biggest moral challenge but with in respect, our lifetime. You haven't, just, he just, should sit down and talk to us. But with respect, you just haven't answered the question that I put to you. Why can't you go through one by one and say what you want? Well, we have. We, we but, have. No, I, I mean, let's, let's, be, let's be serious about this. We need to have a discussion that the community can understand. We can distill a whole... You know, there's 500 pages of legislation. 500 pages. And... You know, I defy most people to really understand how uh, those 500 pages spell out a clear plan. You need to be able to distill it. It is a very clear proposition. Should we have the same level of protection of Australian jobs as the United States? Th that should be a starting point, right? Once you've decided that, how you turn that into hundreds of pages of legislation is not a difficult task. All right, Andrew, let's go back to first principles if we can um, in the last 
just a couple of days, the, the leader of the opposition, um, Malcolm Turbull, has had to upbraid members of his own party about this situation and, and just whether everyone's going to be on the same page and in support of an ETS. Are you all in the same position now? Do you all believe in the need for an ETS or not? Well, there's a range of views, including in the government, uh, I think. The government but, at least has but, a legislative but the fact position. That, the fact is, well, they have. I agree with that. Uh, we had we were the party that introduced the scheme. Yes, you were. Okay. Yeah. We introduced Malcolm but Turnbull. You, you, you don't, and, talk, you don't Malcolm, all seem to be in that same place well, now as you were when you were once yeah, in government. Well, there's a scheme on the table which we think is fundamentally flawed that is going to not just only... Yes, but I am, not, asking, not, I am asking about the no, opposition well, position the, here, about, about whether you're well, consistent. We now. are the opposition, so we are responding to a proposition the government has put on the table, a very detailed proposition. We have said, you know, that we are looking and support a price of carbon, but we want a scheme that will work. This is the biggest structural change that this country, the de biggest deliberate structural change this country will ever have in introduced. It is, this is of great moment what y we're yes, doing. Yes, right? but, so but Andrew, should... Bob, is, is, the, is the opposition consistently unified in support of an ETS, the we, need for an ETS? We, we are, we are, we are, we are, really we yes are no supported. No, well, we, well, we are very supportive of a price of carbon. We introduced the mm -hmm. scheme to do that, uh, but we're not, we're not going to support a scheme which doesn't do what it's supposed to do. If it doesn't have any serious abatement of emissions, and that I mean, everyone agrees this scheme that's currently on the table will do little or nothing to reduce emissions, little or nothing, and yet cost tens of thousands of jobs. That is, that is, that is not the way to pursue you know, good policy for Australia. There is no good reason why we shouldn't you know, wait a, a few months on this vote and have the benefit of what's happening in the United States, what's happening around the world. But even if you wait a few months, you'll never get the nationals in the same tent, will you? Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not convinced of that at all. I mean, we, we are serious about good policy in this area. We are serious about a price of carbon. Uh, there are lots of important issues that we've got to grapple with here, but the government is playing politics. We have put the onus now back on the government. We've got a serious set of propositions, nine very explicit, understandable propositions. The government needs to come to the table now and talk with us about these propositions. Just finally, um, this morning, Andrew Roy, I just want to ask you a, a question without notice, but it's, it's parallel to the points you're making today about wanting to protect Australian, uh, Australian industry. Do you think that the, uh, the Australian Labor Party and the government should listen to the major blue-collar unions when they're trying to get the government to accept that you uh, give a priority to Australian businesses and Australian products during this global downturn and I guess a slight return to protectionism there in order to try and shore up Australian jobs. Should, should the Australian government accept that push by the unions in your view? They should listen to it but not necessarily accept it. I mean, well, again, again, <laughs> that makes for a comfortable discussion, I guess. No, no. Well, it's again, it's, it's like the emissions trading scheme. Mm -hmm. We should be on a, a level playing field with other countries. But if we, we put never our, are, though, are we? but if we put ourselves in a position where we are stopping uh, the opportunity for a lot of companies overseas to sell to us, we may invite retaliatory action, yeah. which stops other countries buying our products. And you know. Our lifeblood has been our exports. So uh, the government's right to be hesitant about this call? I think the government is right to be hesitant about that. Good to talk to you this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks, Virginia. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Joe.